Today, we welcome Marcos Gari, aka Cocho, onto the channel. Cocho is a 23-year-old producer from Buenos Aires. After picking up guitar at the age of 13, Marco later discovered electronic music at age 15. Working hard and perfecting his craft, he now studies cinematographic music at university while continuing to pursue his passion for dance music. Marco has since signed multiple records to labels like All Day I Dream, Tribes of, Days Like Nights, and more. His music has also seen support from the likes of Hernan Cataneo, Lee Burridge, Oliver Koletsky, Above and Beyond, and Elke Klein. Today, Kocha takes us on an in-depth walkthrough of a project he's been working on using our Basic Waves sounds, sharing his workflow, composition, and arrangement and mixing techniques. Hello, I'm Cocho. I'm from Buenos Aires and I was invited by Basic Waves to do a masterclass. Uh, so I want to thank them. Uh, in this occasion, I'm going to do a walkthrough over one of my most recent projects. And this is kind of a, let's say, melodic house kind of track. Uh, intense, powerful. Um, emotional so okay let's let's see this one hope hope you like it and well remember of course i teach online classes in spanish and english so if you are interested to get more into detail or to see your own projects hit me up so uh, let's see if this is currently recording yeah okay so, the track is of course finished, but I don't want to show the whole track yet. It's like, I don't want to spam, let's say. I want to show you how uh, that I thought the track when I was creating it, and how it evolved, the, the composition and the creative part, and then we move on to the, to the arrangement. So. Um, I always begin with the drums. Uh, I think it's easier to define a style with the drums. Um, I mean, if you're looking for, let's say, a more housey kind of track, well, if you start with the drums, then you know you're gonna get there. But in this occasion, it was different. I started with a, a chord progression, which is this one. which as you can see here it's quite simple is um the 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 sixth chord the uh, fourth and the the first the the tonic uh, so yeah it's quite simple but i i kind of like it i mean it follows this kind of emotional thing let's say so I started with this chord progression, which I duplicated. I made a layer with another piano. Yeah, so just that. Those three chords, well, the last one is repeated, the tonic. Um, well, and I, I started with that. Then what I was thinking is that I usually uh, think that it's always good to, to use the, the fifth chord because it's like, well, it's the one that is going to bring up some tension on the track. And with this chord progression, I didn't use the fifth chord. As I said, I, I'm using the sixth, the, the fourth, and, and the tonic. 
So I added a, a melody that is constantly playing the fifth note, okay, which is B here. With some small accidental note. Just like that. And that is like, that will be constantly be played along the track. I mean, its objective is not to bring tension, but well, the, the presence of the fifth note is there, and that's what I was looking for. Uh, then I added some extra notes, but we're going to get there later. Uh, I, I want to go back now to, to the drums, which is how I, I was thinking this, this track, how this, this track uh, evolved. So as you can see, I always work on a tiny loop, sometimes. 16 bars or 32 bars depending i like to work on this loop i try to put all my creative uh, yes uh, all all my let's say all the composition will be made at this stage uh, i don't want to work on any type of arrangement yet that would be our next stage and i, I try to put all my resources all my instruments try to create uh, i try to create it now so when i when i'm doing the arrangement i don't i'm not focusing on two things on creativeness and arrangement now i focus on creativeness then arrangement uh, and that way the arrangement it's easier and well it's, it's it's funnier also it's more like a just like like a puzzle so now i insist on try to create everything i try to think on every part of the track the chorus, verse, the intro, outro, the, the bridge. I try to think on everything. Uh, of course, when I'm doing the arrangement, there are some things that we're going to create there, of course, because uh, the, idea, uh, the idea comes later. But uh, yes, the, the main instruments, I, I try to create them uh, over here. So then I follow the drums. Uh, Nothing too crazy. Uh, I use almost all samples from the basic waves packages, which are really good. For example, this kick, which is from the Dulus pack. Okay, just normal pattern, no, nothing crazy there. Uh, well, I followed some plugins for to improve the the sound, but we can get there later. For the drums, uh, well, this, this hat, also from the Basic Waves Dulles package. Uh, this clap. This percussion loop. This other percussion loop, which I really liked. But I, as you can see, I edit, uh, I... Yes, I changed it a bit. I mean, this was like a complete loop and I just took the final the final part of that loop to make a, a fill, you know, a variation every every four bars. Uh, I, I think that's a good te technique. If you are lacking fills, variations on your, your percussions, just grab a loop and take a part that you like and place it every four, eight or 16 bars shaker a background more like a texture kind of loop a top loop also from basic wave this is from the melody house package really nice also this other hat shaker kind of loop and a ride from another package okay so as you can listen it's quite simple kind of tracks uh, drums this will be the overall group and that's without the ride okay then I follow with the with the bass. 
which of course uh, in this occasion the, we already have the, the chord progression, we already have the harmony, so we don't have much freedom, let's say, with the bass. I mean, what I was looking for here, as it's more like a melodic kind of track, will be long notes on the bass following the, the chord progression, not something... Uh, I mean, I'm not looking for, for groove on, on the bass. So, as I said, he will be C, A, and E, and the bass should be the same. C, A, E, E, and then at the end I made a small kind of variation feel to, to change it a bit. So, let's take a listen. So, uh, for this bass, I used the Legend, which would be like a mini Moog. I really like this plane. I've been using it uh, a lot for a couple of years. And I think this is the initial preset. I just changed the, the polyphony. Instead of putting to mono, I like to put it on, yeah, on, on more than one voice. To to take advantage of, of this spread knob, as you can uh, as you can listen, it's not a full mono kind of bass. Uh, if you put an imager, you'll see that it's a little bit open, quite open, and I like that. I mean, I mean, what we could do to solve that or to just make sure we can put the bass in mono, and that way. And that way we we were sure we're not making we we don't have any 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 problems. Uh, and well, of course, sidechain to the kick, which I use this LFO tool, which I really I really like this plugin. Uh, not only to make sidechain but other cool stuff. In this occasion, yes, I just did a small uh, one for pattern for for sidechain, and I. Put some smooth value over here, which is to prevent the the clicks, and works really really well. Uh, for the tom, I grab another. I usually grab another kick, and I just made a small rhythmic pattern to 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 make like a yes, like a counter rhythm along the against the the kick. So this will be drums and bass. And now let's put the piano. Okay, so there I think you can catch the the idea of this of this track. Then, uh, okay, let's see how I made this. Uh, what do I use for these pianos? Normally, I use the Noiri Pure on contact. Um, I just change the the color, the tonal shift, and the dynamic a bit. I made a small dip on the Q around here, but because the other piano is gonna grab this the protagonism on this on this area so as you can see here and for this piano i wanted a more uh, more like a yeah a soft piano uh, to cover the high more mid high frequencies so i grabbed this one from lats and for this the melody 
I use the contact noir pure, but with the color and the tone I shift on the other side to make some contrast. Uh, and well, I added some small delay, well, not so small delay on, on the melody to, to fill the empty spaces. Okay, I'm sorry I'm going back and forth, but this is how I thought the track, this is how I created the track. That's why I'm going back and forth on the different channels. Then I put this ambient. I might have take it from a sample package. Not quite sure which one because it doesn't have the name. But uh, yes, here are cinematics. It's like a tonal ambience. Really nice. Originally it was on G, but I changed it with the pitch knob to, to E. Okay, really cool. I really like to put this kind of ambience in. Sometimes I just grab a pad and put a, a, a simple chord. Um, we can call it legato or, yeah, tonal ambience. Sometimes it could be more than one chord, but I think it's really cool to, especially when you're starting with the drums, if you put a tonal ambience that is on your course, on your tonic, that would help your mind to to work creatively, uh, to work the, the, the yes, to to start to start the the creativeness. You see, the ambience like it really helps to start thinking about a, a hook, a melody, or or an idea, and. Yeah, it's really helpful and also it covers the empty spaces of your track. Uh, yeah, that also is good for the intro and the outro. Okay, well, then I follow with some more melodies on the piano. Um, I thought we could work a little bit more on that melody. I mean, I could make this on one MIDI, <clears throat> but somehow I just prefer to work separately. Maybe because I thought these notes as a uh, fills, you know, melodic fills, you know, some variations, and I just wanted to separate these ones. Uh, this is this works every four bars, and this one every eight bars. So maybe that's why it's separated. So let's take a listen to this one. This one was made with. No air pure. So oh, kind of high notes, and this is the other field. Low notes. Uh, again with no air pure. More dark color. This one, well, as you can see, follows the same variation of the bass. See, it's G, A, D, and here, G, A, D. So this will be the, all, the, all the pianos together. Let's put it with the bass. really like this this idea it's super emotional then well i have more instruments but this i thought i mean i created these ones later i'm not sure if on the arrangement but i, I know these were created later uh, let's get to this box this is just a, a chop vocal not much to say this is a mixing plan so we're going to talk about it later but this is how it sounds Uh, great. 
Then I created the, the stops, these stops, which I really like. This instrument, I think it's one of the, yes, I think it's the best from, from this track. Uh, how I made it? I grabbed one of the, of the stops from the Melodic House uh, Basic Waves package. I tune it, of course, I changed the root. I put some chorus on it and I just made a small pattern uh, following like it would be like the hats pattern but skipping one you know let's let's hear I really like this and would be like a the bark of a of a dog and I layered with this one which is this one from another stuff from another package Okay, this one is playing the B, okay, the fifth, and this one is playing the, well, the tonic, so they are together, they are making like a, a fifth interval. If I change this one to E, let's see how it sounds. Yeah, I think it's better here on the middle. I really like this this stuff, and of course I followed with some. Okay, the, it's it, you can hear it's a little bit detuned because I put this shifter and I put a super slow LFO to the to the fine of the frequency. That's why it's detuning. You see, like this. Uh, it's not synced, and it's super slow. That's the the idea. You see, just just a bit and super slow. Um, yeah, to make it more, I don't know, more natural. Let's say more 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 interesting. Yeah. Okay, so let's hear what we got, what we have for now. Okay, yeah, you can listen how the the idea is going. Uh, then I I created this lead, which I haven't talked about yet. Uh, but this one I can remember if I created uh, on the arrangement. But let's see it. It's following the same pattern as this, as this stuff, but it's more more wild, more synthetic, and yeah, less natural. I use the Prophet. You see, and I configure the cutoff and the envelope decay to be able to automate, which we're going to see that on the arrangement. And well, let's hear how all the instrument, all the main instrument will be together. Let's And I don't want to skip this snare buildup uh, because yes, I thought about. I mean, usually the the sound effects, crashes, impact, set noises, I usually always create them on the arrangement uh, part, of course, because there's where you're gonna position those sound effects. But this one, uh, I thought about this one during this uh, creative stage because I think it, this snare buildup has some kind of protagonism 
Why? Because when I have all the main instruments uh, that I've just created, I have the main ID, I have the main... Yeah, I have almost everything. Now I have to think, okay, how the bridge and the build-up is going to be. So, of course, I'm going to turn off bass, drums, and key. And of course, this is going to be something like this. And as you can see, as you can perceive now, the snare has some kind of protagonism in this build-up. I mean, yeah, it's the, the excitement, you know? That's gonna, how I'm gonna call it, the, the, the excitement. So let's see how this would be. That's the idea, and that's how I uh, always think uh, while creating this, these tracks. I try to mute the instruments and try to imagine how the bridge is going to be, the verse, the drop, etc. So now that I have all my resources, I can move on to the, to the arrangement. Maybe if sometimes even I spend a whole day on this one, well, a whole day, a whole session on this uh, loop. And I continue the next day uh, to do the arrangement. Maybe just to check with fresh ears how the, how the loop was and see if I have to change something important uh, regarding creativeness, composition. And then I move to the arrangement, which the arrangement should be easy, shouldn't be. I mean, if you get stuck on the arrangement, then maybe that's not the the track. That's not the the project you must continue. Or yes, I don't know. It depends. Sometimes even something happened to me that I moved to the arrangement and I don't like the whole idea. I don't. I don't like the track. But I, I, I somehow I, I like the loop. So what I did, just grab the loop and that I created just like this. I grabbed the loop. I moved it from there. I deleted all the arrangement and start again. And sometimes it, it comes a good track from there because, well, uh, maybe you just needed some more time to, to, to work on the, on the creative part, on the composition part. Okay, so never underestimate this stage. So now... Let's move to the create part. What I would do uh, to the arrangement, what I would do now is just grab all this that we just created, move it around where the drop would be. I would do something like this. Let's say I would move it over here, just select all this uh, and expand it left to right, base, same thing. I expand it left to right and then we start the the puzzle but when i get back because i already did it so this all this is the, the whole track uh, let's take a listen to the most important parts
So as you can see, the the melody of the piano doesn't come till yeah till this bar, um, where the piano enters with an automation on the filter. Quite simple stuff. Um, and well, there are here comes the new instruments that I didn't show yet. This one, for example. This is just me recording on the microphone. Eh, eh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I just thought it could be nice to have this small loop over here. And as you can see, I didn't use it anywhere else. This is just for the the beginning. I put an alter boy to to pitch down my voice and some more mixing uh, things. <coughs> Yeah, just that, and this pad, which I created from the Basic Waves uh, preset package. Again, I really like this package also, from Serum. Which chords I use? The same, of course. Sixth, fourth, and tonic, twice. And this layer from Prophet. Same chords, of course. Except here, I change it. That's why it's another color. Remember when I talked that we that, that I haven't um, played the fifth chord on the track? Well, I, I wanted to give a special place for that here. As you can see, I make the sixth, the fourth, and here the fifth twice. As you can see, the fifth chord. To bring up tension before the drop, okay? That's why it sounds different. Okay, it may clash with the bass, but. No, it doesn't. And then the, the, the normal corporation comes with more, I don't know, it comes better, let's say. And here it's where, where the, the stuff uh, begins on this drop, filtered, of course. Yeah. I keep on automating the filter on the piano. And here comes a section that I like to call it pre-bridge because it's before the main bridge. Uh, the drums keep going, uh, the melodies of the piano uh, are not being played, the, the piano is filtered, and uh, it comes this, well, I call it hidden melody, but it, it would be like another melody that is just, uh, yes, for pre-bridge, Pre-bridge. It's, it's not an intense part of the track. Okay, this is an R melody, which is quite a simple melody. As you can see, just doing the tonic, the fifth, and the third. Okay, it, it would be like playing the tonic chord, but more like arpeggio. Uh, yes, like an arpeggio on the on the chord, and it's just duplicated. One of that. And this sound I made it with a grabbing one of the vocal hooks from the basic waves package. A ver, let's let's look for this one. A vocal hook only for would be this one. Only for tonight. Only for tonight. Okay. And I just grabbed the first, uh, yeah, the first sound of that hook. 
I root the the key, of course. Some auto panning, reverb, and that's the sound. And this one, I grab a layer. This is another hook from Basic Waves. A ver, vocal hook and take would be. Okay, and I grabbed just one tiny part from that. I root it, of course. Some auto panning, reverb, and delay, and it sounds quite nice. Well, I I, I also changed the the envelope of the sound. As you can see, the it, it comes slower, not like a plug, because the attack is changed. And I made it more like a plaque because I reduced the sustain and now you can control the decay. You see? You can control the sound from inside here. I... It's really cool to grab any type of noise and just control the envelope here. You can do amazing stuff. Um, I put it at G because, I mean, maybe the, the vocal hook, but let's say if it says something. Okay, the vocal hook says D minor, and here I put on the root, I put G, but that's because this tiny portion, it's on G. You can check, check that out with an EQ, just look for the these high peaks. Uh, will tell you the, the 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 yeah the note of that of that portion, or you can use the Melodyne plugin. You can scan the vocal hook, and it will tell you the note of that part. And there, in this occasion, this tiny portion it was on G. So yeah, now that I rooted, we could draw this melody. Now comes the hook, the chop. Okay, for that strange effect, Quite simple. Well, uh, of course, on the arrangement, you're gonna start putting these sound effects, which we talk about. I put this noise from Basic Waves package uh, to come to the bridge. Then I simple crash, and this also this kind of tonal riser. Quite nice, super nice. Twice, okay. This one would be on um, on D. Yeah. Why would I put it on D? No, this is not on D. Okay, this is on E. Okay, be careful with the name. Here it says it's on F. So I, I mean, to put it on E would be just minus one semitone, but. All right. Sounds quite odd. So it would be better to respect what DQ is telling you, of course. So and this one would be on uh, yes, on B. If you if you, if you get lost on this part, just grab a piano and try to count. I mean if a ver, the here the the sample is telling you that it's on F. But this was not on F. Okay, let's see the original sample. 
the, the, the original sample, if, you, if we grab the highest peak on the EQ, we put the mouse over there, it says it's on G. So, okay, this is on G. Uh, if we move three semitones to the left, now we are on E, which is our tonic of the track. That's why I put minus three. Then on the second one, I just wanted to make it different. Uh, so which note I selected? The B, because the B is our fifth note. So I just put minus eight semitones. If you're not, yeah, I mean, if you can't memorize that, just grab a piano. Go to G, and if you want to go to B, just count uh, the amount of semitones, the amount of notes you have to get. Uh, you have to count to get to the B. You can do the other way around. I mean, we could just put plus four, and we would be on B. Yes, of course, and it sounds good. Works perfectly well, but I just wanted the lower B, which is this one. Now, how I did that rare effect, just, I just put a portal on the master channel. I selected one of the presets and I automated the the bypass and the dry wet, as you can see. Okay, just that. Uh -huh. And well, I, I put the, 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 the percussion. Filter for the for the stops and for the lead. What else? The decay will be automated on the lead also. <clears throat> the reverb on the stop, volume. That. The snare roll. the the main drop uh, what else we have here okay we have the snare build up uh, this basic waves fill which is amazing amazing the noise and another long white noise which i had to repeat to make it longer that was the idea of the bridge you know to make a long kind of emotional a bridge like it's insisting on the piano you know in, insisting on the piano melodies and that was the the idea and well i automated the low end the the filter on the master as you, as you can see first i turn it on on the bridge and i automate it to yes to filter the lows to make the the drop have more impact and the resonance, of course. See, we are losing the, the low end here. Ah, well, and also a filter on the drums.
and then follows to the outro. Okay, nothing more to say about this. Uh, I, th I think I haven't been clear about this. What I automated on the lead is the field, the cutoff from profit and the, the decay of the envelope, okay? That bringing the tension on this track. The idea was to, and I repeat, to insist on this, you know? To, it's, it's more like a... It's not too clavy kind of track. It's more like talked as a festival kind of track. Yeah. Okay. Now let's quickly talk a little bit about mixdown. Um, I'm not too crazy about mixdown, but I, let's grab the main instruments and see what I did. So the kick needed more. I I do this on every kick. I just put a drum bus from Ableton, and I change the the drive it and the output. Let's see the difference. I wanted to reduce a little bit the click, so I made this small dip over here, and I needed more power, so I put a Pugtech EQ, this vintage type of EQ, uh, to boost the, the, the low end. So let's see, with and without these plugins. Huge, huge difference. Uh, then, well, of course, I did some basic EQing on every channel, but I, I'm not going to get there on every channel. Just small, for example, a, I like to kill the resonances that are annoying on some samples. For example, this right. I kill those two peaks. Let's listen with and without. You can clearly he hear it. So I try to do that with almost all the, the drums. Then as a group, I try to, yes, I try to mix as a group to, well, to glue the, the drums. And what I do is a, a glue compressor, slow attack and fast release to not kill the transients and not too wild. A vintage exciter, again, not too wild. Uh, I normally use this one, the, um, the Ozone Exciter, because you can excite multiband, and that's amazing. But sometimes I use this one, and this preamp, this Sheps 73, which is I really like. I increase a little bit the, the, the air, the high knob, and just a bit around 3k. And yeah, just that. Uh, I really like this EQ. Now let's listen with and without. Of course, the volume is making, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's tricking us because if, when we listen something with more volume, we perceive it as better and it is not, but you can test it yourself. Uh, it changes the thing. And on the bass, well, some basic EQing, the sidechain, the tom, some basic EQing. And as a group, I like to use this max bass. Uh, not too wild, but you can hear the, the difference. It's more powerful. Uh, the ambience don't match. Then the pianos. Let's see if I did something. No, rather than basic EQing, I just treat them as a group. This piano centric, which is a one note plugin.
will be like an exciter. I really like this one. I mean, you can put this one on vocals, pianos, keys, whatever. A, a, compre a compressor. And this channel strip, which I really like also. It has a preamp, an equalizer, a super basic comp compressor, and well, the output. This occasion, I just put some air. I increase uh, here. This will be around, let's say, 5K. I increase a little bit. And a uh, pretty soft compression. Let's listen with and without. Take this out. Again, the volume. Uh, let's let's do the test with the volume. Would be something like this. Uh, a little bit more. A bit more. Right. However, now. It has more body, let's say, and it's more glue, everything. So, yeah. Right. So that's for the pianos. The pads don't match. I just put the same channel strip over here. A lot of air and tiny compression. Uh, for the hidden melodies, just reverb and the auto panning. For the main lead, a compressor. Not so strong, and the shapes to EQ. I just put some volume on the mid frequencies, 3K almost, would be this range. This range. To make it more present for the box, the channel strip, same thing, air and presence. It's not quite a huge change for this sound. Again, this channel strip for the stops. Uh, again, compression. Well, reverb. The shifter we already talked about it. The reverb. It's quite a quite a reverb, especially on the bridge. Some compression to glue, making a huge difference over there. And the shapes EQ, which I added a little bit of air, as you can see, and some presence below 1K, okay? Because I wanted to cover this mid, low mid part of the frequencies, not the high. The high is covered by, by that one. And well, the sound effects, I did basic EQing. Then as a return, I put this small reverb, mainly for the drums. And the, yeah, the piano and the chop. I always suggest to work with two or three reverbs all along the track because reverb is it's an iron instrument. It, it's a room, so you don't want uh, a lot of reverbs on your track. So that's why I suggest to work on uh, as a return. As for the delay, I I don't use much. I just use for creativeness. Now let's see the melody of the piano, and I think just that. And sometimes I like to add extra plugins, for example, this Abbey Road tape stereo to add a little bit of saturation. I think I bring the drums over here. Yes, the drums, and maybe another instrument. Let's check it out with and without this return. Right? It's 
a tiny difference, super tiny difference. But uh, as I, I, I almost always do this to add a, a, a new return channel and put a, whatever kind of plugin, whatever type of saturation. For example, I really like the Decapitator from Sound Toys or this tape plugins or uh, the Fafital Saturn. Uh, yeah, to to have like an extra. Uh, I mean, if some kind of instrument needs an extra push, you just put it to that return channel and it will help you out um, for that presence needed. Okay, and that's it for this track. Okay, yeah. I really like this uh, this track, and I really like uh, the experience to show it to you. So I wanna again thanks Basic Waves and the whole team for this opportunity. Uh, remember that I teach online classes, so if you if you're interested, just hit me up, and hope you enjoyed the the masterclass as much as I did. Thank you.